Hi, I'm Phyllis. My website is southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make a corn casserole or a corn souffle, depending on whether it falls or not. Now, either way, it's going to be delicious. So, I've got a little different angle here today, so let me move y'all in a little closer and show you what first thing that we're going to do, if I can get my camera to move there. All right, the first thing we're going to do is drain two cans of corn. Now these, this is organic and it's from Walmart and it's got no salt. So we're going to go ahead and drain that and use two 15 ounce cans. All right. Got to get a spoon. Hold on. I've got a strainer right on the top of the stew here. It smells really great. So we're going to drain all the liquid from the corn. And the second one. put it in our food processor. Drained a little better than that. Again, that was two 15 ounce cans of yellow corn. Now, the recipe is going to call for two eggs, and what I've done is gone ahead and separated them. So I've got two egg whites, and this is going to be noisy again. I'm going to try this with my emulsion, emulsion blender and see if we can't get that to work. All right, there we go. It's going to be noisy again, so we're going to give it a try. Now I've got this attachment, but I don't like the way that works in this glass, but we might have to do it that way. But let's see if we can beat these egg whites like this. <laughs> Beaters. 
can for now. Yeah, we're going to have to use the beater. I really don't like the way this works, but we're going to do it anyway. Here we go. This is probably going to take a little while, so we'll be right back as soon as I get this up into soft peaks. All right, this worked to my surprise. Look at that. Definitely worked. All right, so that was two egg yolks, and you want to beat them until they're in little soft peaks. We ground up two, can two 15 ounce cans of corn that had been drained. And so now we're going to start on the rest of this little recipe. Move my stuff out of the way. There's the bowl where we drained the water. There was a lot in there, a lot. So you want to make absolutely sure you drain that corn. And it, you really don't have to grind it up like that, but I just think it tastes a lot better ground up. You, you just get a lot more of the corn taste. So now we're going to make the next part of this recipe. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn my burner on and we're going to use two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to let that, I went ahead and turn that burner on high. And while, we're, while that's melting, um, I'll tell you that we made it through that most recent storm just fine, no problem. We did have a lot more wind. Well, let me turn this around. Y'all look catty cornered kind of back up a little bit there. So uh, we had a lot more wind than we did with Florence, a lot more. But we didn't have, again, very much rain at all. And we didn't have any damage, a couple of little limbs down in the front yard. Well, not a couple, a whole bunch of little limbs from the four river birch that we got planted in the front yard. Uh, but the worst part was our power went out from about 9 o'clock in the morning till after dark. So I'm going to say it was at least 8.30 or 9 that night. And what we found out, the only ones that had a power outage in our area was just our little street here. And what happened was about 9 o'clock, a tree limb, a big tree limb, it looked like from a live oak, fell across the, the wires and it uh, caused the transformer to blow out. It made a real loud noise. It sounded like, Mr. Buggy said, that sounds like a shotgun, but it was a, it was a transformer that blew out. But anyway, they got it fixed that night, and uh, we were very, very happy because we were not really wanting to go, you know, the whole evening with no electricity at all. Yeah. All right, y'all, let me move y'all over to the other side because you've already seen me. Uh, grind up uh, the two cans of corn and whip the egg whites into soft peaks. And so now I'm going to move y'all over on the other side. Hold on. All right, I have moved y'all. We are back on the other side now. And uh, so we've got our two tablespoons of butter have melted, two tablespoons of all purpose flour. Put that in. And by the way, I will leave the recipe in the show more section right down below this video. So we're just going to stir that flour around. Like that. Get all the lumps out of it now. I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, I'm adding just shy of a teaspoon of salt. Now, if your corn has salt in it, you probably won't need to add any additional salt. So that's just a little bit less than a teaspoon of salt. And now we're going to add one cup of whole milk. And now we'll just have to keep stirring this until it thickens. And of course the milk was cold, so it's going to take a little while. So we'll talk while this is getting thick, because what we want to do is we, do, we absolutely do not want it to boil, but we want it to thicken up. So we'll talk about the storm again. So um, a lot of places were closed during this uh, recent storm, 
was it Michael? Yeah, I think it was Michael, because the one before that was Florence. Anyway, uh, businesses were closed, and they were closed in Columbia, too, just because the winds were pretty high, and they were uh, telling people to stay off the road. So what we found out is when we don't have electricity, we're pretty lost, y'all. It was really bad. Yeah, and uh, I did have, uh, my freezer was okay, of course, because we just didn't open the freezer um, except to get the smoothie uh, gallon bag out that morning. And um, so we, we just, we didn't have anything to do. Everything is either the TV the, uh, or the uh, computer. And, you know, we, I actually uh, got a book out of the bookcase and started reading a book. I did, which I haven't done in a pretty good while. I've actually uh, had books read to me on the internet. I like that a lot. But anyway, yeah, we, we found out pretty quick that we're pretty helpless without electricity. I was trying to remember what we... What we, oh yeah, we had, uh, I had fixed some, some of that always tender cube steak, and I had uh, frozen, we had, they were pretty big pieces about, about like that, pretty big and kind of thick too, and we had had that the night before, and I had frozen the uh, other two pieces to have for another meal along with the gravy, and so what I did was just, we still had hot water, of course, in the hot water tank. And uh, so what I did was just rinse the gravy off of them while they were still frozen and uh, put them in a little uh, quart-sized bag and then caught some hot water and put that, uh, put that little bag down in the hot water and they thawed out pretty quick. So that was what we had uh, in between two pieces of French bread. And, and they were pretty good. And then that night, once the power came on, I had already uh, had some fried bacon in, in the refrigerator I had fried a couple of days earlier. And so we uh, had some uh, eggs and bacon and toast about nine o'clock that night. As soon as the power came on, I was in here cooking because we were hungry. Yeah, so it's gonna take us a little, while to heat up. Let me just check it. Yeah, it's it's getting hot now, so it should should start getting thick here real soon. You do have to stir this constantly, by the way. And also the other thing, every time I use my uh, emulsion blender, someone asked me what the brand is. So, and I think you can, it's a Bella. And there was no special reason I got a Bella, just because I recognized the brand name. So that's what I got. And I can't remember if I got it at Walmart or Amazon, something like that. All right, so this uh, mixture is not boiling now, but it's pretty hot. It might, might be about ready to start boiling. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just beat these egg yolks, two egg yolks, and I'm going to beat it real fast as I put them in, real fast, because you don't want scrambled eggs in there. Speed it, I mean, you know, stir it and kind of whip it really fast. Otherwise, the other way you could do this is to temper those eggs by putting in some of the milk mixture. Get all that out of there that I can. Stir it like that now because it's really getting thick. I don't want it to boil, so I'm going to take it right off the burner. And it's definitely gotten thick really fast. So my burner's off. Now I'm going to whip that up really good, get rid of any lumps. There we go. 
go. There's what it looks like. All right, so now we're going to dump our corn in. I know this seems like a lot of trouble, y'all, but it is really good. And if it turns out to be a souffle, then you've done super well. But if it turns out the other way, you've still done well because it's going to be delicious. All right, so now. put in our ground up corn. Boy, that smells so good. Mm -mm -mm. Get my spatula here. We can really put that right in with this other mixture. this in with that almost a pudding mixture. So we're mixing the corn right in with this thickened little, it's almost like a pudding. egg whites. And by the way, the um, casserole I'm using is a 2.75 and I've got it well buttered all the way up to the top just in case it does decide to be a souffle. Alright, so we're going to dump our uh, egg whites in all at once, just like that. And then we're going to fold it in by bringing this over the top of them. Just bring the mixture right over the top. Oh wait, y'all couldn't see, sorry. I ought to check my camera more often. I get caught up in what I'm doing and forget to look and see if y'all can see. So we're just folding this in and bringing that uh, hot mixture up over those egg whites. Now it's not real hot, but it's still warm for sure. Now again, if it turns into a souffle, good. If not, it's going to be a great casserole, great corn casserole. And you could actually make this and not grind up the corn, if that's the way you want to do it. But I love it ground up. I just don't like those tough holes. You're always getting in your teeth and you have to eat and then go get the dill floss, you know? All right, I'm just going to mix that in like that now. So what you're doing is introducing a lot of air into the mixture. Don't want any big blobs of uh, egg white in there, if we can help it. All right, we're ready to dump it into our casserole again. This is a two and three fourths quart casserole, but you need to use at least a two quart, at least. And I think this is, a, let me look and see if I can read that through that butter. I'm just holding it up to the light. I think it's an 8 by something. It might be an 8 by 7 and about 2 inches or better tall. All right, here we go. So you definitely need a two quart and a bigger one if you if you got it. Right. So 
So there it is. Now we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And of course you would want to use pepper if y'all like pepper. You could use pepper in this too, to your taste. All right, it smells really good. It smells like fresh corn here in the kitchen. So we'll, we'll be back in about 30 minutes. Now remember, if it rises way up and stays up, it will be a souffle. If it rises up and then it falls all the way back down, it's a casserole. All right, we'll be back. All right, we are back. It's been 30 minutes and the uh, corn casserole is ready. There it is. It only puffed up a little bit, but that's okay because either way it is very good. So I'm going to taste of this for y'all. There's what it looks like. Let me let them mash it out and let it cool a little bit. Now, if you did not grind that corn up and you only used one can, this would probably puff way up, but I don't care about that. I really don't. I just want it to taste really good. It's delicious. That corn is really good too, by the way. Very good. Mm. There's what it looks like all ground up. I like it better that way. It's quite good. Got a real strong corn taste. Almost tastes like fresh corn. All right, y'all, we will see y'all next time. I've got to fix our big meal for today. And we'll probably have some of this with it. It was hot. All right, y'all, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.